everyone, it's Keely here for Soy and Shane. Thank you so much for joining me for this soap making video. Today I'm going to take you along as I do another one of the luxury soap bars that I am planning to introduce. And this one includes Dead Sea Mud in it. Now I have done a Dead Sea Mud soap in the past. I did it as a loaf and it was part of my normal range. But the Dead Sea Mud is that little bit more expensive, a little bit more luxurious, makes a beautiful um, soap bar. So I thought we'd bring it back as a part of the luxury soap range. Now just as I went to come out to the shed to do the intro for this video, the parcel man turned up and I thought I'd show you guys what I have actually received. This is probably going to be a little bit more um, beneficial for the Aussies, but um, some of you others might like to see it as well. So let's go and see. Okay, so last year I noticed over on Instagram when I was following one of my sort of fellow Aussie makers, they were taking pictures using some vinyl backdrops that they'd just got in. And the pictures, it really stepped up her business account, account a lot. So I decided I was gonna go and order some as well. So I clicked on the little business link that she'd left in her post and I went and jumped onto the website and I ordered some. Okay, so these are the ones that I ended up with. I got myself a really nice mark one because you really can't go past a marble backdrop. I got myself this concrete one. I haven't quite done my ideas for it yet. I thought if you put a bit of water on there it will give a really nice marble concrete look. Got myself a really simple white one and then I also got myself this really nice dark sort of concrete marble sort of effect as well. And I got all of these and I will leave links down below for the Aussies from a place called Drops Backdrop and they're down in Melbourne. Since ordering these, I've been seeing heaps and heaps of posts over on my Instagram feed for lots of other companies that do these backdrops. And one of them is actually even more local to me in that they're in Brisbane and they do these gorgeous tile ones. And I have seen other Aussie accounts actually using them and their photos look absolutely amazing. And I went to go and order myself some of these, um, these tile vinyl backdrops. And I was actually rather taken back by the price of them. They're not that bad, really. Um, they were $65 for the vinyl backdrop, but they were only 60 centimeters by 90 centimeters. And all these vinyl sheets or vinyl backdrops I've been ordering from Drops, um, you can actually pick the size that you want and she's got lots and lots of different sizes and I went for 70 by 120 and only paid $45 each and got the buy three get fourth one free. Now this other company I have seen does also do a buy three get the fourth one free but it still works out to be more expensive than coming to this company. Now the only thing is um, this one drops, back drops, do not have a, a tile. They've got a subway tile, which I have ordered, so I will show you that one. But I will also show you how I have got away with not being able to get the tile one that I wanted. So let me get these rolled out and then I can show you. Okay, so here they are. This is the first one. This is the subway tile and she only does a tile in white. But my idea for this one, I'm not really going to lay it down flat, but I've got the um, the panel or she's got a hanger. Let me come up a little bit. Look at my messy candle area. That sort of bar there that you can see with the hooks on the top that is for me to hang these off to create the backgrounds so this will actually get hung up and then I will have one of the others as my sort of base layer I'm going to fold two of these back because I want to save that one to show you now I know this looks the same as the other dark one but it actually isn't it is a slightly different pattern on it but uh, I think I'm going to use this one more than what I'm going to use the other one that I got. But I actually put this in as part of my free um, drops. And then I got this really nice wood one. Now with these woods, you can actually pick um, whether you want your wood to go that way or across the length. So I've got mine to go that way, I think. Yes, that's the right one. And then I have this other one. Now, while I'm getting this one out, what I will say is I ordered these on a Saturday late afternoon. She had them in the post 
by Monday and today is um, Thursday so she's really really quick at getting them out this is one of her two-in-ones so the idea will be that I can either have like a nice solid um, floor and then wood panelling or we can have wood on the floor and then the colour panelling on the back. You'll start to see that in some of my Instagram pictures. I've been a little bit slack over on Instagram the last couple of days because I've been waiting for these to come in so I can do new photos. But what I really like that what this drops does is I'm going to go and grab my one that I was keeping hidden she actually has a custom drop they are a little bit smaller you can pot, pick what sizes you want it is a little bit smaller than the others but I still think that's going to be a really nice background and as you can see I've managed to get tiles in the color that I wanted now to get this color all I've actually done is I've gone on to Canva which I've got the paid membership for I have found the tile pattern that I wanted put it into a file I straightened it up I actually changed the color slightly because this was a much deeper terracotta orange on the camera it's looking quite pink but it actually is a really nice peachy color so I'm trying to keep in brand with the orange colors in my logo and then I sent the file off to her and she has now printed me this and this as a custom drop still only cost me $45 so that's a $20 difference between this other company and this one so I'm really really happy and this is still actually bigger than what the other company was selling as well as part of their tile range and she can do anything if you want to print a background full of flowers and bees she can do that as well as a custom um, a custom vinyl drop so if you are here in Australia and you are thinking about getting yourself some vinyl backdrops to do your photography with before checking out all these others that keep popping up in Instagram because there are lots of them go and check out the link below for drops backdrops I highly recommend her her service is brilliant she's got lots of beautiful designs to pick from and like I said if you cannot find the one that you really really want then she has got that custom um, design as well and the best thing I find with her website is that you can actually choose the size of the drop that you want for me the 60 by 90 centimeter is just not enough because sometimes I will use my my um, vinyl so it goes in a complete sort of L shape and only having 45 at the bottom and 45 at the top is just not big enough for me so that 1.2 meter really makes a big difference so um, now that I've shown you that let's go and see how I'm gonna make the Dead Sea mud soap let's go all right so let's get into making this soap I am making it in one of the slab molds because this is one of the luxury soaps and for those I like to use Dean's split slab mold I will leave a link down in the bottom for those of you in Australia that are interested in them they're a they are a fabulous mold really really love them I've now got two of them which I am using for all of my um, luxury soaps so I'll just get that quick mix there what I'm going to do before I start adding any of my additives I'm going to start my soap off as always mixing the lye in I'll probably actually just stir it manually because I want to split just a little bit off for some white but I know that if I um, add in all my additives and then try and do some white it's just not gonna work not for this particular soap I have worked with Dead Sea Mud before and it was a beautiful spa like um, soap that I got out of it I'm just gonna give it a quick pulse just want to bring it together into a very very light emulsion so I can then add in all the other additives into my main batch that should do for now when I do some more mixing later um, that's when this will all start to really come together let's pour off hmm, an almost full jug of this one I need to leave some room for fragrance that will do enough I don't want too much I just want a little bit of contrast in the main soap what I'm now going to do into this main batter here in this pot I have this lighter green that is some seaweed powder and this darker one in here believe it or not that's actually a green clay it's an olive green Australian clay but it does look a little bit brown doesn't make um, 
doesn't make your products go green but the green one has some really good sort of properties for the skin and is one of the more gentler sort of clays so I like using that one as well as kaolin gonna get that mixed in probably before I do too much more mixing so I don't contaminate this one too much let's put in some titanium dioxide and give that a quick mix other ingredient for this is some dead sea mud now just to make this a little bit easier to blend into my soap batter I did put it into my mixer here and then I added in some water just so I can get a bit more of a smooth paste because so, otherwise um, dead sea mud is actually quite thick and heavy and is quite difficult to get it to blend into the soap so I'm just going to get all this scraped out of here Decided I want to split this up for a little bit of color as well so into this sort of bigger or into this one jug here I'm going to add in a bit of mocha mica and I think the other one will actually just pour it in with a bit of titanium dioxide let me get this split out fragrance that I am adding into this one this is one that's actually been sent to me Kelly who runs confectionery soaps co she sent me a wonderful little Christmas New Year gift with some awesome um, aprons in there and also this bottle of wood sage and sea salt I love 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 this fragrance oil so was really really excited to see that one in there let me give this a bit more of a mix So I do offer wood sage and sea salt in my home fragrance range and I was actually planning to make this soap using the um, fragrance oil I have from Off Aroma and then I got this one sent to me. It was actually yesterday in my time right now and I thought well I'm going to make it with this one and I don't know what it is but American fragrances are just so different to what we actually get here in Australia. Like we often get dupes of the American fragrances, but for some reason ours just always smell different. <laughs> I, I've said it a few times. They are very, very heavy on vanilla in Australian fragrances. They just can't seem to make a fragrance without throwing vanilla in there. So when you smell the wood sage and sea salt from Aroma, don't get me wrong, it is a beautiful fragrance. I absolutely love it and was gutted when I couldn't get it for so long. Um, but when you smell it, you can smell the vanilla in it. You can smell that it is a very warm fragrance. Um, it's quite a comforting fragrance, very much so a winter style fragrance, I would say. When I took the lid off this one, this one is clean, it is fresh, it's almost masculine, but um, still feminine enough as well so very good unisex sort of fragrance um, it is just beautiful really really like it right now the mud is actually taking over from the smell of the fragrance oil but I know that once this one all settles down that fragrance is really going to shine back through here and this is going to just have that beautiful freshness to it so all I am doing for this soap is a drop swirl in here get some oh this get this wide in it's thickening up but that's okay because it just means we get some really interesting contrast making a right mess today Well, it's always a good sign when you scrape your bucket out and you don't have any clumps of mud in the bottom. You know then that you have got it well and truly mixed in. I'm going to finish scraping off these tops and then we might just stick the chopstick over it just to get a little bit of a swirly pattern going.
there's a video that keeps popping up on my um, recommended videos to watch on YouTube. Just at the moment, I really haven't had time to sit and watch anything. So I keep looking at these videos and sticking them into my watch later. And there's one that Lisa has put out by I Dream In Soap. And I, I really need to go and watch it because the title of it really has me very interested. And the last few times I've made soap, I've thought about um, this video and wondering what Lisa thinks of my soaping. <laughs> The video that she's put out is something to do with not being a messy soaper. <laughs> so I don't know. I've, I have to go and sit and actually watch that video. Maybe I will watch that tonight so that tomorrow when I come back and cut this soap, I can tell you what that video is actually about and whether or not I need to implement some of Lisa's ideas on not to be a messy soaper because you should see my workbench. But I am super duper happy with how that is looking. I'm going to leave this one set up overnight and we will be back in just a moment and we will get it cut open. I am ready to unmold this Dead Sea Mud Soap. I love these molds that Dean makes. So basically on the side of them here, we've got some Velcro tape. I'm just gonna undo those like so. And then basically what these do is it just splits on open. In fact, I think I've gone the wrong way. No, that's right, splits open. And then we can easily lift this five kilo bar of soap out of it nice and easy just like that i will leave links down below so you can go and check out these molds that dean makes they really are made to very high standards absolutely love them the velcro on the side of them just stops them from splitting open um, when you are moving them around so they are a really really good design Let's get this paper pulled off. Now I did go and watch the um, the video that Lisa from I Dream In Soap put out about how not to be a, um, a messy soaper and I, I did laugh throughout it because I knew the reason why I had gone to actually watch it. Um, to be fair, I had made five soaps at the point of making this particular one so it is really hard to actually keep yourself really nice and clean and tidy when you are doing a soaping marathon if I'm only making one soap it is a lot easier to keep clean she didn't really address the sort of throwing your soap everywhere while you're actually making it um, but she did give lots of really good tips about how to keep yourself nice and organized when you are soaping so I will actually leave links to the video um, if you have have not seen it or if you're not following Lisa I do recommend following her she has some awesome soaps some really good designs as well and she takes you through her processes of how she actually goes from the very beginning of designing a soap right up to making and putting everything away so it was a really interesting video to see but we are now all completely and utterly un, um, unpapered and molded what I'm going to do is go and grab my log splitter and then we are going to get this one cut up into some logs and then I'm going to cut it up into the individual bars. Now, as I said, this is a luxury bar, so it is going to get cut differently to my other soaps. I'm using the log splitter that Dean sent me. Really, really lucky. I now actually have two log splitters. The one that Dean sent to me to try, I leave for my luxury bar setup. So it cuts them at six centimeters wide. And then the log splitter I actually made for myself, I leave that set up for my other loaf mold, which cuts my bars to eight and a half wide. So really, really lucky on that. But if you are after a log splitter, go again and check out Dean's um, Etsy store because he has some really good ones in there. Let's get these cut into their loaves. I did have a little bit of an oopsie when I was cutting this one. I kind of, the trick with using those log splitters is just to push and keep going and don't stop, especially when you get to the end and your soap tends to tip up. Um, 
I kind of overcompensated because I stopped and thought about it, ended up coming down and then it's come back out, but that is okay. I'll probably end up with that bar because I really, really, really like um, this soap. So get that. All the other um, sort of logs are perfectly fine. So we're going to cut off. So, oh, wow. That is, that's really interesting. That will actually become a sort of sample piece. I usually cut up my soaps that we end up with the end pieces and then I cut them into or put them into little bags and give away as samples. What I have decided to do with this luxury range, I'm actually going to make up some sampler packs in the luxury range. Oh, really, really liking this. And what I'll do is some of these bigger, sort of chunkier pieces here, I will sell them in sort of like packs so you can try all of the luxury range of soaps. So there'll be, there'll definitely be this mud one. There'll be the camel one. I also have a salt bar which I am working on. And there's a couple of others that I've got planned to come out. So once I've got four or five of them in the range, I will make up some of these little sampler packs to put onto the website. There will also be enough. I usually end up with this sort of piece from off of the, um, the end bar. So I'll actually cut that up into some nice little samples to give away in orders as well. So you, you will still get your little samples in your orders because I love giving little sample bars away. And I also end up using like the end pieces of soap because I don't always get to use my full bars. That's just a choice. I'd much rather sell them and let people experience them and I can always have the little scrappy pieces. And by using the little scrappy pieces, my soap gets used a little bit quicker so I can try them all. <laughs> so that's my excuse for using the, the scrappy ends. I am loving how this has turned out. I've got some really cute little swirls. I love how that one is that lighter color and then it swirls into that dark one before swirling on back out. Really, really like it. Really pleased that I didn't put anything into that white and poured it off first because um, it has come up a brilliant white against everything else. Now, the other thing I do get lots of questions about is my soap cutter. Now, um, I used to have a link in my videos for this particular soap cutter. I have actually been removing it from out of the videos because the company that I got this particular one from, um, they constantly open up and close down for orders. Oh, look at that. We've got a curly whirly in there. They're constantly opening up and closing down for orders. So you just never know if you can actually place orders with them or not. My big multi bar cutter, the guy that actually made that one closed his business down two years ago. So you actually can't buy from him. But if you are here in Australia, I noticed the other day, oh look, I was not expecting curly whirlies in this soap because it was so thick. I absolutely love it. As I was just saying, I noticed the other day, over on Aussie Soap Supplies, they are now selling this style of cutter. They still, I think, have those really cheap, horrible eBay style ones, but they are now selling these as a single bar cutter. And when I checked the other day, so as of January 2021, they were only $149. That is dirt cheap, guys. So if you are here in Australia and you are wanting a proper soap cutter, go and check out Aussie Soap Supplies for their single bar cutter. Can't believe I've got these curlies in here. That one looks like tree rings in there. That is, I honestly, this soap was so thick. Kind of blows my sort of thinking out the water for what I thought, but then I suppose it did. I'm thinking you get these tight, curly, whirly swirls. When you pour your soap mix into your mold and do a drop swirl, but save back that main color and then pour it in with a bit of force. So really drop it and push it along the soap. And I'm pretty sure that is what is actually causing those curly whirly sort of swirls. Oh, look at that. That is awesome. And I'm pretty sure that is what actually creates it because it creates like a vortex in the soap, creating that really tight curl. And I suppose with this one, I did do that. I did all my drops and then with what was left over, 
I did that really heavy force of pouring the soap in to get that curly sort of thing. It's something I've been working on, that sort of theory of it for a while to see if that is what is going to happen and I'm pretty sure that is how they get created. Now I know that um, Tierra over at Luna Fay, she is no longer Gypsy Fay, she is Luna Fay Creations. She really likes these curly whirly ones as well and I know she said she wishes she knew how to create them so Tierra give it a go, get your mane pour most of your mane, then do your drop and then with the remaining mane colour pour in with a lot of force and a lot of movement and hopefully we have cracked how to make those curly whirly swirls. So I hope you have enjoyed watching how I made my Dead Sea Mud Soap. If you did, why not leave me a thumbs up, any comments down below. And if you come and follow along with me over on Instagram, you'll see when this one is going to be ready, which will be towards the end of January, beginning of February. And it will then become a sort of constant in the range if everybody is liking these luxury bars. So thank you again for watching and until the next video comes out, I hope you have a good one and I will see you then. Bye. <laughs>